It's time for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group with certified financial planners Kevin Corhorn, Mike Bernard, and Josh Gregory. Welcome to another episode of the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group, where every week we're helping you take your next wise step in your financial life. Thanks for being here, friends. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm your host. I'm also one of the certified financial planners on the program. With me in the KFT studios, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Are you looking at moving into a new or different house this spring? And if so, what is your plan for the down payment? What are the best options for your down payment and what are the mistakes to avoid? We're going to hit that and more on today's episode of the Wise Money Show. They keep talking about, well, housing prices might not accelerate as much if we have more inventory. And I I don't know. What do you guys think? More people are going to sell their house this year? List it for sale? I have no idea. It, ah. it sure seems like that's been the trend for a while here, right? We're going to be talking about it. I'm, a, I'm guessing we'll have several shows this upcoming, this spring, about, about the housing market and whatnot. So anyway, if you have questions for the show, we'd love to hear from you. We're going to hit questions in the second half of the program. You can call or text us, 574-222-2000. That's 574-222-2000. Online, wisemoneyshow.com, and then all over social media, wherever you're at, we are there as well. Just search The Wise Money Show. All right, so I've had a smattering if I can use that term sure. correctly, yep. thank you, uh, of, of folks reach out to me over the past few weeks with the same question. I thought, okay, we got to talk about this on the program. And that is, all right, we're moving. Where do we get our down payment from? And I started, you know, the first time I was like, okay, you know, crack the knuckles, planner mode, let's, let's do this. Second time, same thing. Third time, it's like, okay, we've got to talk about this, but I'm sensing the trend. And it got me thinking, and guys, I wanted to see if you're seeing this trend as well. But why this question now? It's not like people are moving more than ever, but why is there this curiosity, this question of where, where will I get my down payment? And I, I think the reason is, here's what I've come up with. Okay. Three things. One is it, this is such a, a buyer's uh, or seller's market that you've got to be fast and you, you mm-hmm. likely have to put an offer down or you've got to buy before you can sell. Right. Okay, so that that's issue number one. Issue number two, you likely don't have a lot of cash sitting around because there's been zero interest rates and inflation skyrocketing, and so you likely don't have a lot of cash just just sitting there. And then three, housing prices have skyrocketed, yeah. so your down payment is now higher than it used to need to be. So, guys, is it just me? Are you having this question from clients as well? Are you seeing anything different or anything added that you would add to this list as to why it's tricky right now? No, I, I think you hit the list perfectly. And it is a challenge. And anyone who is moving in this environment, it's just so different than when it is a buyer's market. In the past, you would want to sell your house so that you know you're getting all the cash out of it. You know that you are capable of selling it. And then you go out and you look at all this inventory, all these houses, and you pick the perfect one for you. And you've got time to get it done. But it, it's the exact opposite these days where Boy, if if you don't find that next house before you sell your house, you may be homeless for a little while. And and there may be some folks who are in a financial position where they just it's almost like they have to sell their house in order to get the cash out of that existing home so that they can make their down payment. That's the struggle right now. Yeah. yeah and as, when you're talking about the the first market, Josh, where there's plenty of inventory on the market and you've got plenty of time, it's also not unheard of to put in an offer contingent on the sale of your home. Yeah, that's but, right. But uh, there was a house that sold just down the street from ours this past summer, and it it had a list price, and the offers were cash offers at list price and above with no inspections. That's yeah. incredible. And, and so if you said, hey, <laughs> I'll – I'll give you, you know, ninety-five percent of what you're asking contingent on the sale of my house. Your your offer isn't even considered, right? right. So if you if you have to move, you you have to position yourself financially to be able to act very quickly. And so I I think of a couple of things. I think of man, make sure you've got the list and your realtor has a list when. Back in the day when we were moving, we actually created the list. These are the features that we're interested in. Mm-hmm. If a house has these features, don't show it to us, please, because we're just we're not we wouldn't buy that house. Yeah, yeah. Right. If if it doesn't have a a bathtub 
or you know something yeah, like that. Right. Now, right. I it feels like people are are often being forced to kind of lower their standards in many ways because there are so many desperate buyers out there right now. And that's what I hear when you're describing, hey, whatever it takes, you know, we'll throw 20% above listing price in order to get you to accept our offer. And we'll waive some of the normal contingencies mm-hmm. like an inspection and stuff like that. We'll just, we're buying it as is. That sounds like a desperate buyer. And I, I guess I would just ask the question, well, are you really a desperate buyer? Do you need to be selling your house right now? Are you just kind of tempted because you see how how expensive houses are and you feel like, man, I, I want to take advantage of this. I want to cash in on this. The, the problem is when you are a seller and then a buyer again, you, you know, you're know you maybe getting an amazing deal when you sell your house, but you're paying someone else an amazing deal when you buy as well. I, yeah. You're not, are you really getting further ahead unless it's for some lifestyle reason? You know, you need a bigger house, you need to be in a different school system, you're moving for your job. Those are the things that kind of force your hand. But if your hand's not forced, I, I don't know. Is this the right environment for you? How do you avoid being desperate? That's the key. I, I think there are going to be more people warming up to, and I, we will see more people warming up to the idea that, yeah, I don't think prices are going to come back down. And if prices continue going up, We know we need this third bedroom. We know we've always wanted to be in a different school district. We know that our house is getting older and and might be warming up to the idea that things might they might need to make a move. I I think there's going to be more housing activity this year. Obviously, we didn't have as much during 2020 because people were afraid that the boogeyman was in someone else's house and they didn't want to go in there. Um, And and then, you know, in 2021, there were lots of home sales, but it was staggering to see how expensive the houses were. I think now people are warming up to it. We'll, we'll see what the housing market does this year. Yeah, and, and that's also a function of interest rates. Yes. Yep. So that's right. with super low interest rates, I can afford a lot bigger, uh, a, a lot more expensive house, if you will. Right. That's right. All right. So where do you come up with your down payment then? W- w- what are your options? Let, let's rank them. And you don't have to rattle it off perfect. That, okay. This is my pre-ranked list. But what are your options? Okay. I, I have a list for you. Okay. Uh, I can sell my existing house. I can get, if I've got equity in that, I can do a home equity line. I can borrow against my 401k. Hang on. I would at least that second one, it seems mm-hmm. like is the most common one. And I'll just tell you at right, the top of my list. right now, if you're thinking, yeah, I don't know, maybe we might sell by, do you have a home equity line in place? Right. Like that's your action item right now. Not that I love the idea of you borrowing the equity out of your, out of your house to make that down payment on the, the new house that you're buying, but that is likely going to be your best choice. So if you think you're going to be making a move, you better get that in place right now. It's the most direct way for you to use the equity that you've built up in your house to buy the next house. You just borrow it out of this existing home. But it, it is best if you already have the home equity line in place and maybe you just haven't, you've never used it before. Um, a lot of home equity lines, they want you to keep it open for three years or more so that you don't get hit with some surrender penalties or, or fees at the end, recouping some closing costs that maybe the, the, the bank had paid for you. So that's one that you needed to kind of plan ahead for that. You also can't put a home equity line in place when your house is already on the market. No, no uh, lender out there is allowed to let you borrow against a house that's for sale. Yeah. So I didn't mean to cut you off because that list, we, we need that list because some folks um, have already done that. They've listed their house and now they're wondering, wait a second, how, how am I going to get a home equity line in place? Where will I get the cash from? And there's other options on this list of, I don't know, Kevin, what do you got? Five, six? Yeah. And so we, we need to go through that list. And then I also thought of a few different scenarios. OK, so so whether you're uh, whether you're retired, whether you're moving, whether you're buying a house for the first time, whether you're switching to a rental, we're going to cover those scenarios as well, uh, all surrounding. All right. How do you come up with a down payment and what's the best place? So that and more coming up on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Hello, YouTube. Thanks for being here. This is the Wise Money Show. You're at the Wise Money Show channel. What you're watching right now is our weekly one-hour talk show that airs right here on this channel, 10 a.m. Eastern time every Saturday morning, also on podcast and a few radio stations in northern Indiana. That's why it's an hour or 50 minutes of airtime, something like that. Um, Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. Uh, If a one-hour talk show is just too long, you're not into that, 
there's too much banter back and forth, whatever, you want something more direct, we've got next Y step videos that air all throughout the work week. If you're thinking about it, likely is our content library. We've already talked about it and posted a video on it. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and if you like the content, like the content. All right, let's keep rolling. Okay, so do you? Do you I didn't mean to cut you off. No, 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 that's fine. Do you want me to do put my list out there and then sure. and then we and then we can talk about them. Attack it, or do you want me to just um, start doing it and then you guys cut me off? <laughs> <laughs> I prefer that approach, actually. <clears throat> it's more fun. I don't know. Hey, Josh, let's tell him one thing and then do the opposite. That's right. <laughs> when he See says one can... and then he's looking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Thinking of selling your house, thinking of moving this spring, you've got you got a plan. You better be you better be planful with your down payment because you've got to act fast in today's housing market. What are your options for that down payment? We're helping you with it right now. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks for being here. My name is Mike Bernard. With me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Every episode of the Wise Money Show is on the YouTube channel. Go check it out. Go to YouTube, search the Wise Money Show, subscribe and follow us there. All right, Kevin, we cut you off. I'll just tell you, public service announcement. If you're thinking of moving, if you're thinking of buying a house and you've got equity in your home, you better open, get the process started to opening a home equity line of credit. But all right, yeah, Kevin, just what's little, the list? It, and as long as you're on that, Mike, let's just, just have a little rabbit trail. So you, you talk about fixing the roof while the sun's shining, right? That's it, with your finances. You want to be doing this. You want to be proactive. So I had a good friend who has a business and he had said, well, the bank is offering me a line of credit for my business. I don't want that. I hate credit, blah, blah, blah. And I said, hey, go get it and get the biggest one that you can possibly get. And he said, no, 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 I don't want to. And then he called me in July of 2020. And it's hard to remember back then, but there was incredible uncertainty. Yeah. And he was in a profession where he wasn't allowed to work. Hmm. So um, he was saying, man, it, it his business wasn't allowed to do business. So he he was saying, man, I wish I had done that. So if you have a business, I would encourage you get a line of credit for your business. Um, the you know Quite often the lenders want to give you the money when you don't need it. So yeah. if you're in a good financial position, you had a great year last year, uh, go shopping and see if you can get a, home, a line of credit for the business. But then that's not what we're talking about. So forgive me. So we're talking about a, a home equity line of credit. And I would encourage you to shop, do some shopping, because there are some lending institutions that don't charge an annual fee. Uh, there are some lending institutions that let you pay interest only. Mm-hmm. There are, and so there are a lot of different choices. And if you don't go shopping, you have no idea what your choices are. Talk to your certified financial planner. They should be in the know because one of the benefits of working with a certified financial planner is they work with a number of different clients. So they see many different situations mm-hmm. and they should be helpful to you. So going back to the list, um, before you were rudely interrupted by yes. someone. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I, I could sell my house. Yep. And most people say I, that's not too interesting because I don't want to uh, move twice. Mm-hmm. And so sell your house. But we'll, we'll, I'll just give you the list and then we can talk about them <laughs> from there. Number two, home equity line. Number three, borrow against my 401k. Number four, 60-day rollover out of my IRA. Number five, <laughs> my existing cash reserves. Number six, I could borrow from a family or friend. If you um, are looking forward to uh, difficult times in the future, <laughs> do that one. And not all of these are fantastic, but no, yes, these are your n- choices. The, right. Well, these are at least uh, on the table. Yep. Number seven, especially this year, your tax refund. You might have a chunk yeah. of money. And depending on what your financial situation is, you might have a disproportionate chunk of money coming back. Um, you might ask... Number eight, this this is this is eight in almost rank order because it's one of my least favorites, mm-hmm. but it's a it's a possibility. Ask the seller. You can ask the seller to put money in for closing costs for a number of different things. 
I sold uh, a number of different houses and almost everyone I sold, my realtor came and said, hey, they're asking you to, in order to make this deal work, they're asking you to do this. And this was back before the market was super hot. And so yeah. um, I wanted to, I, I would rather be f- free of the headache than, than have it. So um, I was willing to do that. And then number nine, and I would not overlook these, is there are government programs that are available to you. Hmm. So when Lori and I first moved to town and we were renting a house, we had the main level and there was another tenant and the upper level and um, they were quite loud and it sounded like they were, they did dance lessons uh, almost every night. <laughs> and, uh, and so we said, Hey, we got to find a place. And uh, my wife said, well, there's, how can you, how can we buy a house with no money? Because when we came to town in 1993, we didn't have any money. And I said, well, watch me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, hold, I, my, hold my Mountain Dew and watch this. So, <laughs> And because I was a veteran, I got a VA loan. And if you're a veteran, you can get a VA loan with no money down. It's pretty amazing. So there are, there are government programs out there that will help you with these things. I was literally holding my breath. I, I thought for sure you were going to say, ask your business partners for a loan or something. <laughs> <laughs> and I was concerned. I, I'm glad that didn't make your list, though. I know, that, but your I do, list was way longer than mine. But I do have a quick question for you guys after this. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I would probably draw a line to that list around number three or four. And, and that, that above that line are serious options to consider. And below that line, I, I wonder about. I was keeping t- track of Kevin's list there for the first half or so. Uh, Come on, 60 guys. 60 day rollover. It, is that below or above your line? I, okay, so I, I'll tell you. We I was serving a couple that retired and lived in, you know, the uh, northern Indiana is known for this gray permacloud that spans from, oh, October to June. Um, and so they, he retired and they were ready to, to get down to the Southwest. And so they bought their dream home and they, they needed to buy it and, uh, and, and do so quickly. And so they were very confident they were going to sell their existing house very quickly as well. And so I told them all the reasons why 60 day rollover, you take money out of your IRA, you've got to get it back within 60 days. Otherwise there's tax and penalty. And listen, there's no reason for you to do this. Just get a home equity line, just go through a different option. He said, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Couldn't get it done. Yeah. Could not get it done. And there was about $150,000 that he had to pay tax on Ow. all in one year that was t- <laughs> completely unnecessary. So yes, it's an option. Yes, it can work. If you go through one of those scenarios where, yeah, this should work, and then, uh-oh, this fell through, and wait a second, this took longer, and wait a second, this wasn't supposed to happen, and then, yeah. okay, we don't have the money to put it back in. Uh, you go through one of those once, and you'll never do it again. That's right. And you know, you you maybe, like, we're talking about how to fund a down payment, so in theory in every one of these situations this is down payment and a loan is following and sometimes the banks just take a while they take longer than they say they're going to and um you just don't know uh there may be some some delays injected into the process of getting out of your house and into the the next that you can't anticipate and that's that's the one downside to doing the 60-day rollover but Essentially, it's just one of the the ways for you to get temporary access to liquid cash. That's what we're talking about. Because if you have a house to sell, when that house sells, we're assuming that there's going to be plenty of equity in that to cover your down payment and then some. Um, Otherwise, you may not be even considering doing this. But um, I, I liked the 401k loan idea. Um, you, you know, if you borrowed up to fifty thousand um, dollars, that that may cover much of your down payment. Um, but to me, home equity line was the first one on, on my list. And again, unfortunately you have to have it already in place before you, you really need it. I actually go back to Kevin's list. And as much as I want to, you know, knock on him here, I, the, the top of the list would be to sell your house first. I think yeah. that's unrealistic. It's less realistic in, in today's market, because if you're, if you're moving, you likely want certain features. And in order to get those features, you're going to need to act quickly. I heard someone share that right now, the trend, because the market's so hot, a lot of houses are listing on Wednesday. They're doing so that people, basically it's being announced middle of the week, 
showings are happening Saturday, you're getting offers Saturday night, and it's sold by Sunday is is essentially what. So I think that list, Kevin's probably in that right, right order. I, I I do, and and so, but I would I would work on getting that line of credit in place. Now, there's a lot of mistakes that we've seen people make during this process of moving and trying to find a down payment. We're going to share those coming up, so you can avoid them. So that more coming up on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Yeah, so we were going down this track with these folks, and I said, you might also want to get a home equity line in place, whatever, because it was just this strange circumstance. And I started, well, if you're going to do this, at least consider putting this in motion as well. And he said, no. And then he said, okay, we'll do that too. And it's like everything. You you couldn't have imagined that it was going to go that way, and it it did. Hmm. So well, 150 grand, and he's never been close to that tax bracket since. Yeah, that's that's tough. Yeah. But are they happy in their new home and they are sunshine? He will, he'll he, never work with J P that something or other. That bank again, ever. <laughs> so <clears throat> all right, third segment. So we can hit some of these scenarios if we need to. I thought, well, let's go to um mistakes. Mistakes, yeah. And then we can come back to scenarios depending on where we're at with time. What are some of the, mis- the mistakes that we've seen people make when they're doing a down payment, when they're moving and switching houses and they need to come up with that down payment? What are the mistakes that we've seen so that you can avoid them if you're considering a move this year? This is what we're talking about right now. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks for being here. My name is Mike Bernard with me in the KFG studios. Uh, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Stay up to date on all Wise Money content. Find us online at wisemoneyshow.com and then all over social media, wherever you're at we are there as well. Search the Wise Money Show. All right. So interesting time period. You know, coming out of 08 and 09, the, the great financial crisis, I remember this time of year thinking, is this the year the markets, the housing market's finally going to turn around? And then the next February would come. Is this the year the, the housing bubbles or the housing market's finally going to turn around? And now it's like the Exact opposite. Is this the year the housing market's going to slow down? Is this, mm-hmm. I don't. I personally don't think so. We'll see. If you're considering moving, you've got to have a plan that fits within your overall financial plan. It can't distort things or throw things out of whack on your down payment. What are some of the mistakes, guys, that we've seen people make when they're looking to do the down payment on buying a house? I don't know that I would call this a, a mistake, but it's maybe a warning attached to where we left off in the last segment of selling your house first. I, I've seen a couple different folks who they sold their house and then they're kind of left out in the cold for a while because they can't find that next house. So they're stuck renting longer than they ever imagined. And I, I can think of some clients who they are tired of the apartment life when they've mm. been used to living in a big house. They're yep. looking for their next big house and they're stuck in you know cramped quarters in, in the meantime. Or others who, you know, you, you got to go live in the a uh, family member's basement or something for a little while. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if you have those types of safety nets in place with family or friends or whatever, then selling your house in a seller's market is great because you know what you have to work with. You know you've got your cash, you're liquid at that point, and you can move more swiftly than a lot of buyers. Um, the, the risk, though, is that you just don't find anything because, you know, the right house may not be out there yet for you. Can I just... Um can I just go back to number 10? Sure. So number 10 is I could borrow against my non-qualified investments, which would be a margin account. Okay. So we talked about really three different ways of borrowing. So a margin account is almost like a home equity line for my non-qualified investments. Mm-hmm. The 60-day rollover, that's a that's a 60-day loan. I can take that against my IRA money. If I take it out and put it back, it's a non-event. I can do that once a year. Um, the The third one is the 401k loan that Josh had mentioned a little bit in the last segment. That 401k loan, it, it typically I can borrow 50% of my 401k balance up to 50000 and then I can pay that back over five years, depending on your plan document because y- your plan document may allow you to pay that back over a longer period of time. Might l- you pay it back over 15 years. Mm-hmm. So it, but you might have to pay it back over 5. But these are different ways to access to tap into 
existing assets. So this is where you're looking and saying, hey, I've been working, saving, investing, building these assets. Uh, what have you done for me lately? Can, can you do something for me now to help me? And it, it, this, this time, when you look at what the real estate market is doing, this is a time to really, really, when, you, when we talk about financial planning, work closely with your financial planner because there are, there's so much happening right now in the in the world in the markets in the real estate market and everything else people are tempted to get a little bit emotional about these things and you need someone who is not emotional about your financial life because if you want to make a mistake in your financial life get emotional it's it it's almost a certainty hmm. absolutely and and hopefully your certified financial planner is bringing ideas that you would not have thought of or helping you execute on it really well uh, I'm thinking of a client who at the end of last year, they gave us forewarning that they're probably going to be buying a different house early sometime this year, moving into more of an assisted living facility, that, that sort of thing, um, or, or that type of continuum, I guess. And um, they, they gave us enough foreknowledge that there were parts of their portfolio that had really run up in value that we could cash in with almost no tax consequences. Um, and we wanted to do that while we still had 2021's tax picture available to us. And so um, if it's not borrowing against certain assets, as you were articulating, Kevin, mm -hmm. maybe it's actually liquidating some of them temporarily. Yep. And um, again, it, it all boils down to what's the hand that you have to play? And what are the assets? What are the resources available to you? Your, your picture is unique than compared to your neighbors or a family members or whomever. And uh, you want to play to your strengths. That's what your certified financial planner is supposed to be helping you with. I've seen a mistake where people use all of their emergency fund, all of their available cash. What I usually share just from experience and watching people is when you're moving, there's like a six month financial fog <laughs> where yeah. cash is just, I didn't know I needed to buy a lamp. Oh, I didn't know I need, I didn't know I needed to go to Home Depot and buy that tool, Josh, or right, or or where, wherever. Like f money is just flowing. You've already said yes to the house, so yes, that means you've got to buy the rug. Yes, that means you've got to buy the paint or whatever. And so when you use all of your available resources towards that down payment, and you don't have anything left over for an emergency or for the other expenses of home ownership and moving. That's a mistake. Josh, have you ever seen someone buy a house and then have an enormous claim in their house in their first year <laughs> from maybe some water damage? Been, been there, done that, it, got the t-shirt. Got the t-shirt, yeah. right? It's, it's, uh, so anyway, that you don't want to use all of your disposable cash. The other mistake that I'm seeing a lot, and I, it's, I don't know if it's more if it's a mistake or it just caught people by surprise, and that is... Because of the scenario that Kevin mentioned earlier, where the house is listed for X, but all the offers are coming in at X plus something else. We will pay 100% of list or 1,000 above your highest offer, something like that. If the house then doesn't appraise for that level that you're buying it for, which you would say, well, that can't happen. The house is worth <laughs> what someone's willing to pay for it. Well, but the bank will only loan you up to a certain percentage of what it appraises for. And if you have to pay more than what it appraises for, that means you've got to bring even more down payment because the loan won't likely possibly increase because you just had to pay more than what it's worth. And so that means your down payment needs to be bigger. And if you've, if you haven't been planful for that, that can be a mistake. Mm -hmm. So those are the couple that I mentioned. And the other one, Kevin, that you mentioned, yeah, I've seen loans. I've, I've sorry, 401k loans, where if you're buying it for a house, you can pay it off over 20 years or 30 years. Not all of them have that though. And so if you're thinking, well, I'll borrow from my 401k and pay it off over 30 years. And then, wow, I got the surprise that I've got so much cash coming out of my paycheck because I've got to pay this loan off in five that I've seen that be a mistake as yep. well. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, so anyway, but th this is the, making a move. It is an emotional decision. It is because it's school district for your kids. It's, it's neighbors. You're seeing, you know, cookouts, you're seeing family time. It's, it's important. And for many people, it's one of the biggest financial decisions you'll make in your life. And so making sure that you make a house decision that's connected to all other areas of your financial life so that you know when you're saying yes to this house 
or yes to this house and therefore this down payment that you're not having to sacrifice in other areas of your, of your financial life that you're unwilling to sacrifice in. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. right. You you might make trade offs. You might willingly make some trade offs to you know make this move or whatever. But you don't want to get in a situation where in order to live in that neighborhood or that size house, you're only funding your four hundred one k five percent instead of the fifteen percent that it needs to be. So, you know, this is the reason why every topic needs to be on the table with your certified financial planner. That's right. They need to know what your hopes are with things like housing and school districts and growing your family and things like that, because they can help you get out in front of this and have a plan well in advance (laughs) so that you have options when it comes time to make choices and take take action. That's right. That's right. All right. More coming up here on The Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. I didn't want to get into scenarios. We wouldn't have time. Right. Mm -hmm. And so now for four segment, we can either hit scenarios Mm -hmm. or we can hit questions. It's up to you guys. So I, I was listening to you talk about uh, you know this 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 cash flow fog that happens Mm -hmm. and it is i would attribute that to poor leadership and i'm only speaking from my own experience because i've been in that fog and what happens is you get into that fog and you say oh i have to have a lamp or your wife comes to you and says, I have to have a rug or whatever. You know, We have to have new furniture in right. this new house because the old stuff just looks ratty. Right. Been there. I've right. been there. And so what, what you have to do, what you really have to do is have a plan and make your decisions based on a budget and say, okay, well, this is, this is, this is what's inbound. Before we do anything, this is what's inbounds, this is what's out of bounds. What's out of bounds is stopping my retirement savings in order to have some extra cash flow to do this. What's out of bounds is skipping the 529 contribution this year for the kids because uh, and, and so now you've you've created boundaries for yourself and really the definition of of success. And so the question is can can you now have a successful move? Mm-hmm. Yep. That's good. Yeah. Um, all right. So do you want to do scenarios or get into questions? Questions are good. Okay. Uh, a bunch. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Thanks for being here. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. My name is Mike Bernard with me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Every episode of the Wise Money Show is on podcast wherever you listen just search the wise money show subscribe to it follow us there rate the program as well we appreciate that the whole discussion thus far has been about the housing market and when you're making a move likely with things moving so quickly and the housing market being so hot you've got to have a plan ahead of time for a down payment we the highlights work with your certified financial planner discuss this this goal, this hope, this dream, and strategize the process, okay? Part of that should be where will you get your down payment from, and hopefully you have some options and some choices. Some of those you're going to want to get started on right now, so work with your CFP on that. We'll be discussing more about the housing market and and uh, and everything this year. It'll be certainly an interesting time as the rates potentially go up. What does that do to mortgage rates? And then will we have more houses on the market, a bigger inventory? We'll see. Uh, let's get into some listener questions. We've got a few here from fans of the show that have accumulated. And first one's uh, coming from the YouTube channel uh, from Joe. He said, this might be a silly question, but I'm assuming a brokerage link account is taxed the same way the 401k is taxed. So you're not paying any capital gains on that money in that brokerage account let's let's level the playing field great question joe some jargon in there let's level Mm -hmm. the playing field so if you have a 401k you you have your typical options you've got either a money market or a stable value fund and then you've got various types of investments bonds and stock mutual funds what what have you you've also depending on the 401k have a conduit over to a brokerage account so you can push money from your 401k over to still your 401k, but in a brokerage account that lets you buy and sell anything. Now, that's not correct because the your 401k plan provider is going to 
uh, tell you these these things you can do and these things you can't do. But you can buy individual stocks and other things like this. Some uh, 401ks allow for different types of options trading and things along that nature. So when you push money from your, I would think of it as a traditional 401k over to the brokerage link, now it, it looks and, and acts a lot like a regular brokerage account that you mm-hmm. just put money from your checking account into and make investments. Yeah. And the whole purpose of this, uh, you know, one, one of the criticisms for many 401ks is that, you know, you're limited to a certain number of mutual funds that your employer picked for you with their advisor. And you, you maybe have a dozen options, but you can't build the portfolio that you want for yourself within those dozen options. And so this brokerage link gives you access to a whole world of additional investments so you can diversify like like crazy. The, the confusion that can come into play, though, is it feels like you're investing outside your 401k because you're buying stuff that wasn't part of the the roster of options. But the reality is this brokerage account is technically treated as if it is still within the 401k. It is an asset of the 401k. So you're not actually pulling money out of your retirement plan and investing somewhere else. It's all happening within. So it is treated from a tax standpoint. If, if you get to retirement, you're ready to start liquidating investments or rolling them over. It, it all is treated the same way. It's just another one of the assets that you own. It just happens to be a really flexible option and a tool that some people have at their disposal. Maybe you've had it as an option, but you've never really used it because you've always just stuck with those few uh, mutual funds that you were given a choice from by your employer. But it's still within the tax shelter. That's right. It's still within the 401k. So as you're, you might even have a separate login to get to that brokerage link side. And so, yeah, it's going to look and feel and taste and smell like a a separate brokerage account. Uh, But as you place trades, it's still within that tax shelter. So, guys, if someone now there's been some criticism of these brokerage link 401ks recently um, because the the whole idea is uh, from a from a 401k and even a fiduciary gesundheit, um, a (laughs) a um, making sure that the plan is appropriate for people to make great decisions. Um, There's been some scrutiny that because there's this massive speculation that's been going on in the marketplace, well, we are we have carefully selected the investment choices that you get to pick from within your 401k, those 15 or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Like there's there's um, they want to select funds that uh, pass the smell test and that you can't get in trouble with, hopefully. But then you go through the brokerage window, the brokerage link, and it's a fair game. You can buy a three time leveraged S and P 500 investment. Right. And that exposes the 401k plan to some level of risk. And so we'll see. I love the I love the option. I mean, for us as a financial planner, as we're looking at your 401k, helping you craft the right investment mix. When you have just 15 options, it's difficult to do that. It's mm-hmm. very difficult to do that mm-hmm. to get all the diversification you need. So when you go through brokerage link, you often have those tools at your disposal, but not for everyone. Yeah, not for everyone, because you can venture into some investments that maybe you don't fully understand. And I I don't know, I I tend to have more of a bias towards let people make their decisions and deal with the consequences. And hopefully they're making a wise choice that if they're if they're coloring outside the lines of the the area that they do have competence in, um, then they're getting advice. And that's why, you know, of course, on this show, we're always talking about why you need to have a certified financial planner. a certified financial planner helping you navigate your decisions with the 401k if they have a brokerage link tool at their disposal there's going to the, the planning that they can potentially do with you or for you um, is just greater because there's more choice but there's been plenty of research that has shown that when you give people more and more choices um, they're actually they, they can become kind of paralyzed by too many options and they actually don't utilize the 401k as much. That's why the list of mutual funds just keeps on shrinking in most 401ks. And it's one of the reasons why this brokerage link, again, could be a redeeming feature within your 401k if you're working with the right certified financial planner. Yep, that's right. Um, All right, next question here, also from the YouTube channel. Uh, Okay, you can contribute. uh, let Let me rephrase this. 
can you contribute the catch-up contribution in the year in which you turn age 50? Or can you only start that catch-up contribution once you turn age 50? Yeah. So how, how does the catch-up contribution work? It's isn't, a good, isn't that the same question? No, because... Uh, there are some areas of the tax code where you have to actually have your birthday in a year before something opens up to you versus most areas of the, the Internal Revenue Code. They treat you as um, wh whatever age you are at the end of the year, That's it's treated as if you were that age for the entire year. That's right. Okay. All right. And all right. So you. think 59. It's a good question. Think 59 and a half. Okay. And actually, this is the, we'll, we'll talk about ketchup contribution here in just a second. It's not just a sauce you put on your burger. It's uh, it, it's it's it changes how much you can contribute to your four one k four three b IRA that sort of stuff. But fifty nine and a half, age fifty nine and a half, that's the secret age at which you can draw money out of your qualified retirement accounts and not have to pay a ten percent early withdrawal penalty. Well, that one's you've got to be fifty nine and a half. Yeah, let's answer that question you've right there. You've got to be fifty nine and a half. It can't just be well. This is the year that I turn 59 and a half. I'm not yet 59 and a half today, but I will turn it later this year. Therefore, I can draw money out. No, you cannot. I mean, you could. You just have to pay that 10% penalty, even if you're a day early. So that's an example, though, of your birthday matters, right? And yep. when you, you actually take action. This happens to be this, this question of when can I start adding extra money, the catch-up contribution to my IRA, my Roth IRA, 401k, that sort of thing. It is in the year that you turn 50. So as long as you have your birthday by December 31st and you're going to be 50 this year, then uh, you, you have at your disposal an extra contribution. This is a year that maybe you need to be looking at your payroll deferrals um, into the 401k. Maybe you need to be bumping those, increasing them. Maybe you need to be budgeting a little bit differently so that you can save an extra catch-up contribution into that IRA or Roth IRA here in 2022 if you're turning 50. Yep. Yeah, so those, those kind of magical ages, 50 is one of them, and it's the year I turn 50. So I could turn 50 on December 31st and start my catch-up contributions on – in, in January. Mm -hmm. So that goes for my, my 401k, 403b, IRA, Roth IRA, those types of things. 55 is, a, is another interesting year because if I retire in the year I turn 55, not when I'm 55, but in the year I turn 55, and I'm 99% sure about this. Yeah, no. Uh, if I retire in the year I turn 55, I can pull money out of my employer's retirement plan. If they allow it. If they allow it, right. That's a plan-specific feature. Yeah, as I was saying, if, <laughs> if my employer allows it, I can take money out of the plan and and pay federal and state taxes, if you do have uh, both those, but you're not going to pay the 10% penalty. Right. And the 10% uh, early withdrawal penalty. Mm -hmm. And then 59 and a half is another big... Yep. Moment. That's a moment in time that's not a, I turned 59 and a half this year. No, I turned 59 and a half. Therefore, I now qualify to. Who do you think, like the, the, the roundtable discussion where it was, well, should it be 50 or should it or should it be 60 or should it be 59? When should we let people draw money out? Do you think there was like someone that stood up and said, it should be 59 and a half? Or do you think they compromised? Just, you know, split the baby? What? How do you come up with 59 and a half? That's just baffling. To me. I don't know. The yep. same way you come up with seventy and a half, which is no right. longer really an issue. It's, it is. Yeah, it's that's 70, true. It yep. is so that I can do my QCD, my qualified yep. charitable distribution, starting at seventy and a half. And for a tax planner, that's a huge deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then seventy-two. Yeah, yeah, which is but RMD. It's, it's by April 1st of the year following the year I turned 72. <laughs> yeah, it can be, but then you've got to do two withdrawals. Oh, my goodness, we've yeah. lost everyone. I can see who's listening right now, and it's no one. No one. That, this very, <laughs> It's very, very, very Ken confusing. And so, okay, uh, and sneak in one more question, and it kind of comes to the theme of this show. If I'm, if I'm turning my house into a rental and buying a new house, where's the best place to get a a down payment from. So I can buy my new house if I'm not selling my existing house. Where do I get my down payment from? Well, if you, this is, you want a horrible answer? I've got one for you right now. You refinance your existing house 
Because in an inflationary environment, if you believe we're in an inflationary environment, the best thing that you can do is borrow as much money today and pay it off tomorrow with dollars that are worth less than you borrowed today. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I personally am not a huge fan of that. That's a tool. Yep. So to go to the to your woodshed and say, I hate the shovel, but I love the pickaxe, I would say, no, no, it's a tool. So, But I would be very, very, very careful because the same fire that can heat up your food can burn down your house. Uh, yeah, I, I think you got to look at the equity in your existing home. Ideally, this is not a knee-jerk decision, and you've been planning for this and building up cash for that down payment. But work with your certified financial planner. It's not for the faint of heart becoming a, a, a landlord. So, all right, that's all the time we have for today. On behalf of Josh Gregory, Kevin Corhorn, all of us at KFG, have a great weekend. We'll see you next Saturday for the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Securities offered through Silver Oak Securities, member FINRA slash SIPC. Advisory services offered through KFG Wealth Management, LLC. Doing business as Corhorn Financial Group. KFG Wealth Management, LLC and Silver Oak Securities Incorporated companies are unaffiliated.